Recently, one of the burning questions in my mind was, how difficult is it to build a complete full stack app with no handwritten code? I got together with a friend and over a few evenings, we built Keep Going, a semi-humorous app that sends you motivational messages to encourage you not to quit in the tone of voice of various well-known tech entrepreneurs. And the key thing is we used AI to build almost 100% of the code and also 95% of the design. Now conceptually, this is a pretty simple app, but it has all the makings of a real production app that could serve as the MVP for a startup. Before I show you a bit more about how Keep Going works and how we built it, here's a quick time-lapse of us building it. So now let's do a quick demo of Keep Going and I'll show you a bit about the kinds of things that we used AI to build. Here we have the landing page. We called it Your Personal Cheerleader. This is all AI generated copy. We did tweak it as in we went back and forth with the prompts, but it was in the end generated by AI. We got the Start Your Journey button, which we used a Magic UI rainbow button for this. And we've got a little bit of a notification panel going on here, which is also a magic UI component. And we have our logo slash mascot, which does a little wave when you hover over it. This was tweaked by us a little bit in terms of how it behaves and how it looks. And we did have to design the logo ourselves as well. But to achieve the functionality of these notifications coming in, waving of the hand and all of that was generated by the AI agent. So scrolling down, we have a bit more about how this whole thing works. You've got some smart messages. Uh, our AI analyzes what you're building and sends you personalized messages. All of this copy and design was generated using agents. Now, as I said, we wanted to build a real production app and that does mean taking payments for most startups. So we wanted to see what the experience was like integrating Stripe payments as well. And obviously, to keep this running, we will incur some costs. So we thought if some people find this interesting, then it also helps cover the cost of actually sending the AI generated messages. So for sign up and authentication, we use Superbase and we just stuck with Google because that's just the easiest sign up method. And once you sign in, you get shown your dashboard. And then here we have your profile, which is what we use to actually personalize the messages. So we've got your name and then you can enter your website, whatever you're working on. We then use Firecrawl. We go to that website, we crawl it in an AI ingestible way. And then we have a bunch of prompts that we used to then take that website and summarize it. And here you can see the website analysis. This is a bit meta here. I've put keep going as the project that we're building. We have a brand name, a description and some keywords. And these are all generated using an LLM from the website. And then we then feed these back into an LLM when generating the motivational message, just to give it a personalized flavor. We also have some notification preferences. You can choose whether you want frequent, normal or minimal notifications. And finally, the mentor style. Now this was a later idea, um, came to us towards the end of building Keep Going. And I just wanted to see how quickly I could get this up and running after having had the idea. And it was pretty incredible just using an AI agent and asking it to give us firstly the UI for picking a mentor and then generating some messages in the tone of voice of these entrepreneurs. This is when the AI agent itself was writing the prompts for the LLM to then ingest and generate the tone of voice messages. We also have a quick way to record your progress now I'll show you how the emails look in a second, but in the email there is a button saying, I will keep going, and that will record the fact that you press that button. Again, just a lightweight, fun way to try to encourage people to keep building the thing that they're building. So this is how the email that you receive looks. Hey Robin, 
your keep going project is on the right track. But remember, success in the startup world isn't a straight line. These are apparently words by Mark Lu, serial indie hacker. Obviously we have no affiliation with Mark and I really respect his work, but this is all AI generated. So, you know, it's just a bit of fun. Finally, if you press this keep going button, that's when we record your progress towards your goals. And that's when you kind of see that down at the bottom here. So in short, we have a full app with a landing page, a sign up and login flow, database, notifications, payments, everything you would need to launch the first version of a startup and built almost entirely with AI. I say almost because there were quite a few small bits where we had to intervene and there were definitely a few bits where it couldn't help us at all, which I will get into shortly. Let's now talk a bit about how we built Keep Going and some of the lessons that we learned along the way. Now, the first thing we did was to go to V0 and generate a landing page. V0 is a great starting point for a landing page as it uses modern components, fairly clean designs, and it just gives you a template to get started with. But the downside is V0 generally uses Next.js to generate things. Now, Next.js is not the most opinionated framework when it comes to backend code. LLMs tend to perform a lot better when given a structure and a framework to work within. So for that reason, we kind of wanted something a bit more opinionated, like a full stack framework, kind of akin to Ruby on Rails. But we didn't want to use Ruby, so we chose Redwood.js instead. So after creating a Redwood.js project, we ported over V0's Next.js landing page into Redwood.js, which is still pretty easy because they both use React on the front end. And then we opened this whole project up in Windsurf, a brand new editor at the time. We started prompting Windsurf's agent, Cascade, to iteratively add the functionality that we needed. Bear in mind that we didn't really have a full end product in mind at this point. We were just kind of playing around with this idea of sending motivational messages, and we didn't know exactly what we were building, a bit like how you would approach building a real MVP. We had the base of an idea, and we used the agent to bounce ideas off of it, try a few things out really quickly, and see what the results were. I'll also just quickly take you through the code and the most interesting bits that we had to build. So here we have a Redwood project, we have the API and the web, which are the main two areas, the web being the front end and API being the back end. We're using Superbase, as you can see. And basically, most of this is generated using the Redwood command line tools, and then we just iterated using AI agent. So in the API part, the most interesting stuff really is in the email generation, because we have this email personalization function. And this is where you pick a mentor personality and this is how the LLM prompt is constructed as well. So as I said, this is all generated using Windsurf and the prompt itself took a few iterations and in the end, we're also using Grok instead of OpenAI as I found that that resulted in slightly more realistic personalization for some reason. But essentially we feed in the project that this person is working on along with the last message that we sent them, just to make sure that we're not duplicating what we said last time. And also just some prompts about tone of voice and what kind of things to talk about. And the output format, if I was writing this myself, I would have probably asked for a JSON output, but Windsurf decided this was good enough and that's what it's using to, to parse the output later on, just using a, a regular expression. And in the end, we template the email, we stick the messages in and we send it. There's also a few other things I would consider to make this a real app rather than a toy app. One of them is payments via Stripe. We have the Stripe webhook set up here. We have the portal and the checkout integration. And we also have background jobs. Now we firstly kick off a job that will run every few minutes just to check if there are any new notifications there are to be sent. And then that job itself will kick off a job per notification. And as part of that job, we decide whether we should send the notification to that user, we generate the email, and then we send the email as well. Moving to the front end, there's nothing too complicated here. It's just a few pages, again, all generated via Windsurf's Cascade. And if we just go to the home page here, landing page, you basically see all the code that powers the landing page I showed you earlier. Got some chart components. 
and a whole bunch of ShadCN UI components, which is firstly what V0 pulled in when we built the initial landing page, but also we when we prompted Windsurf to generate more code, we kind of explicitly had to state to use ShadCN UI components. Firstly, because they're great components, and secondly, that kind of guardrail makes it a lot easier for the AI to, to generate the right code. So let's now talk a bit about the difficulties we had and some of the downsides of using AI to code. Now, AI agents are really well suited for front-end code. They still make a lot of mistakes, but mistakes are relatively easy to spot on the front-end. When front-end code is broken, your page may not load, or maybe you have a button that doesn't quite behave as expected. But the back end is where you need to be a lot more careful. LLM mistakes on the back end could mean missing authentication or authorization. Or you might end up with a hard to spot edge case bug that you only notice after some time has passed. So we had to be really careful in reviewing the back end code generated by the LLM. Don't get me wrong, it was still a massive speed up over writing the code by hand. It's just that we had to treat it as if it was written by a junior engineer and just review it line by line, take a step back and review the architecture and just make sure that all the fundamentals like security were in place. So five to 10x speed up on the front end and maybe a two X speed up on the back end it all sounds really good. So what's the catch? So we actually spent the majority of our time trying to get this app from local development to production. That's where AI really can't help you at the moment. There's so many things to set up and sign up for and configure. So we had to sign up for Superbase, resend for emails, fly.io for hosting, Stripe for payments, and a whole bunch of other stuff that just needed configuring and setting up environment variables and secrets for and then making sure that they were correctly in the Docker file. And then also we had to get the background jobs to run, which took a whole bunch of time to get it running on fly.io. The whole process of deployment is just the process of trial and error, going back and forth between your hosting provider and your local machine and trying to figure out why things aren't working. In the end, we probably spent somewhere between five to 10 hours getting this thing from local dev to production. So in terms of lessons learned then, the first lesson for me was that AI agents are absolutely the best way to write front-end code right now. With a bit of supervision and tweaking, they're good enough to replace pretty much all of the hard work that goes into creating and scaffolding a front-end, and making small tweaks is also quite easy as well. You can basically get away with not writing any code yourself. And lesson number two is that I think we need better models before we can let LLMs loose on the back end. Yes, you can still use them to speed you up and they do make certain types of code generation a lot easier, but you just have to be extra, extra vigilant and they make a lot of mistakes. Definitely using a full stack framework that has a lot of opinions on the back end helps because it gives the AI some guardrails. And lesson number three is that it's still far too difficult to get a locally running app to production and serving real users. There are ways to do this if you go to Replit or Bolt and just use their deployment systems, but in reality, you can't really use these for real apps. So I hope in 2025, we see some big strides here in taking apps from conception all the way to production. And that is it. If there is anything I didn't cover about how we built Keep Going, please feel free to drop a comment below. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I make regular videos on the state of AI and software and tech. So if you enjoy that kind of content, then please also consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.